Option View Education. Uh, today we have Len Yates as our guest, but before we get started, a quick disclaimer, the Capital Discussion is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. You don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical trades are believed to be accurately represented, however actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. So with that out of the way, this is for educational purposes only. And uh, Len, I think this is uh, the first time we've had you on the, uh, um, as a, with a webinar, so welcome. Uh, really glad to have you here. And um, we have quite a few Option View users in our community, so this should be an interesting session for everybody. All right, well, I'm glad to be here. And I uh, think we're just about ready here. If we can uh, sh share yeah, you, the screen. Also, you should be able to share your screen now. All right, I believe it's, I yep. believe we're good. I see it. All right, let me uh, switch this to slideshow. Yeah, okay, so here I am. Um, I'm going to be talking about trading earnings announcements today. And that photo is a pretty good one from several years ago. <laughs> um, so moving on. Here's our disclaimer. And I'm not going to read this to you, but uh, it does say that, you know, what we say here today is not to be taken as investment advice. So... Um, that uh, being said, I want to uh, go ahead. So, um, yes, earnings announcements. Um, uh, this this slide is about our earnings plays module in the software, and uh, I'll show this slide again at the end of the presentation. I don't want to bother you with some kind of a sales pitch right now, but it was about a year ago when we introduced uh, the earnings plays module in the, the program, and now we have um, the Discover Options course on available on the same topic. So these are available. And now, with that, I'd like to switch to using Option View for the remainder of my talk. So we'll be using Option View live here. And uh, yeah, earnings. Earnings plays seem to be uh, the talk of the town these days. Macmillan has had a couple of articles about them, and I seem to recall seeing others from other authors. Um, and I think we started it, or at least started this uh, current wave of interest, as it was about a year ago when we introduced the Earnings Plays module into the program. Um, the new Earnings Plays module includes several brand new ways of trading earnings and brings up lists of uh, terrific candidates for you to use the various kinds of earnings plays with. Okay, in today's talk I'm not going to um, go into a comprehensive talk about the earnings plays module. I just want to highlight a few of the opportunities coming up. We've got uh, a busy schedule coming up. We're right at the beginning of an earnings season. So this is a chart showing this week's suggested trades and then the next week. And then there's uh, the first week in November seems to be, looks like it's going to be a very busy week with a lot of trading opportunities here. And then the next week and so on. And then after about five weeks, it usually tapers off. So we are at the beginning of a great earning, hopefully a great earnings season. You know, we love earnings plays around here in the office. There's several of us that are trading them, and we're always talking about them, and uh, we look forward to the next earnings season. And, you know, we're hyped about this one, too. So um, now I want to say that for if you're interested in a comprehensive discussion of of earnings plays, okay, uh, you can go look at a presentation I've given in the past uh, at our website. If you go to the Option View website, let me just show you how you find it. You would click on Support. Can you see my cursor? Support. And then you would click on Option View Video Archive. Okay. 
So then you go in there and let's see if I can I'm not sure I'm going to quickly find my presentation, but there's it's in here somewhere. And uh, there's also presentations done by Steve Lentz and others here, plus um, people that you know are affiliated with Option View. So there's a lot to look at here. I would encourage you to have a look at some of these. Um, or YouTube. Now, I want to show you that uh, we're now in YouTube pretty heavily. If you go to YouTube and then uh, type Option View for a search, uh, you can find a lot of presentations here that, that we've given in the past, and we've recorded these. And just quickly look here. I think that I'm looking for my own, and I remember what it looked like. But... Uh, Oh, if you choose the Option View Systems channel, then uh, that that will bring you to uh, things that are more concentrated and came from us. And we've scrolled down, scroll down a little bit. I think that. And I think you can get there if you go YouTube.com/slash/OptionView. It'll redirect you there. Right. Okay. Well, good enough. We'll just uh, leave that at that. So again, so a comprehensive overview uh, can be found there. I'm not going to do that today. We're going to look at some very specific plays. And uh, if you have the earnings plays module, then you know that these tabs appear in the quotes display. Uh, e primes, E overs, E pairs, and runners are the four tabs I have. And briefly, E primes are stocks that seem to have a habit of jumping far enough to make a straddle purchase profitable. Uh, it won't be profitable every time, uh, but over the la our, our alg algorithm uh, keeps track of the last eight earnings seasons, and um, it gives you the numbers here. So for example, if you can see my cursor, uh, we're, we're looking at Biogen, which announces in two days, and the number, the quality number for that is 66 which means that over the past eight earnings events, if you had bought a straddle every time, you should have made um, an average gain of 66%. Now, uh, that won't happen every time, of course. The, the numbers 4, 8 here show that it was successful or profitable four out of eight times. So um, that means that the gainers were quite a bit larger than the losers. And there will be losses when you're playing earnings. I don't know how many of my listeners are new to this idea of playing earnings, but you do need you do need to get ready for there to be losses because they there will be there, and you can count on it. Um, the great thing about playing a straddle purchase, though, is that you very seldom lose all of your uh, your investment, and you can usually recover some of it at least. Let's just open up the Biogen matrix, and uh, the at the monies looks like it's uh, toggling back and forth between uh, calling the 270s at the money and uh, the strike right above that. But let's just go ahead and put on, hypothetically here, um, a 270 straddle purchase, and then we'll analyze it. And... Okay, so here we have our straddle purchase, and the line that's highlighted automatically by the program is the T plus 2 line because this stock will announce in two days. Let's go back to the quotes display. I just wanted you to see that the, the earnings date here is the 21st, and it's BMO, which stands for before market open. So uh, this will be announcing Wednesday morning which means we need to get set by Tuesday, tomorrow afternoon. And I do intend to do this, so I'll, I will be in this trade. Uh, I've already decided that uh, I'm going to. So because 66 is really a high number um, and a very high-quality number. 
So you have uh, the situation here where break-even is at about a plus 7% move, and to the downside it says a, a negative 8%. And it's all profit if it moves farther than 7 or 8% in either direction. So that's cool. Now, I just want to mention that this green rectangle here, this, um, I mean, <laughs> triangle, indicates that in the past, whenever the stock has had a positive jump on earnings, it's been a weak one. But whenever it's had a negative announcement, it's been um, stronger, you know, it has stronger moves to the downside. So that's what this uh, red triangle here means. Does that mean we should maybe put on an imbalanced straddle? Well, perhaps, maybe. I will leave that to you, but I'm probably going to put on a perfectly balanced one myself. And um, let's look at a price chart, too, and, and have a look at these moves, because and to get the blue triangles to appear, you just click this button, the one with the uh, red E on it. So the last, uh, the last announcement did create a huge disappointment, so that was a big gainer for straddle buyers. And then other, other jumps have been significant in the past as well. And if we scroll back a little farther, to see the remaining, I think that's about eight. Let's see, we have five of them in view here. And then, uh, so these are the three more. These three, it looks like uh, they did not do much in the past. So those were, so the stock is apparently becoming, in a sense, more volatile in its responses to earnings announcements. And I like that. I think that's favorable. And it's another reason that I'm going to put this on for sure. So um, another thing that's, okay, well, why don't we move along? There are a lot of other announce, there are a lot of other prime movers here, and I've got these sorted by date. If you just right-click in this spot here, the dates are set up in order. So this one is happening on Tuesday. The next one's happening on Thursday. Uh, excuse me, that's happening Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. Um, and every one of these uh, seems to have a tendency to jump more than what the options would have indicated, okay? In other words, even though the options are very expensive, you buy them anyway because the stock seems to have a tendency to out-jump out their expectations, okay? And then you have uh, the opposite situation where there's stocks that uh, apparently – usually do not move as much as the options would suggest they will. And so uh, you can do a strategy that would be appropriate in that situation, like uh, sell a naked straddle, strangle, or, um, uh, or buy a calendar. Okay. So that's the situation there. Now, the next screen is about our earnings pairs. Now, this uh, is kind of a new concept that we came out with. Uh, a year ago, and in this in this concept, you look, okay. I'll read it to you. You just you just hover over this uh, the tab, and you get to read what it's about. It involves two stocks: a primary stock that is making its announcement, and a secondary stock that's a company in the same industry that tends to jump with the primary. You buy a straddle on the often cheap options of the secondary stock. And if the primary jumps, often the secondary will also. And the quality indicators on these are just as, as they were with the, um, the prime movers. These indicate your average percent gain per trade. Okay. So, for example, with uh, doing the Visa and MasterCard pair, uh, you can expect to make a 35% gain on average. Um, so let's look at, uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you something new, but I want to show you, I want to talk about runners first, and then I'm going to come back to these earnings pairs. But um, it occurs to me, I, I want to comment on the MasterCard and Visa pair situation because these two very often announce their earnings within a couple days of each other and sometimes even on the same day. Let me mark 
the announcement date for MasterCard, and then we'll look at Visa. All right, so Visa announces one day, and then uh, the third day later, it looks like MasterCard is going to announce. And here's the effect that this has when these are so close together, is that you may, want, you may not want to do the first of the two, this one where um, Visa is going to announce where you should, according to the plan, um, buy a straddle on MasterCard. You'll find that MasterCard's options are priced pretty high right now just because MasterCard is going to have its own announcement. Okay, so that kind of ruins it for this one, but does leave you with um, a good play on the second one. And that's why I, I usually only play the second of these two. And uh, I will do so this time because the, the, um, the Visa and MasterCard pair is a really high quality one. I've done that uh, many times and had good success with it. I will say this, overall, the earnings pairs approach has been a little bit disappointing. Uh, for me personally, it's been a break even. Um, and so that's why we're more interested in this variation that we've come up with. And I need to, uh, but first I need to talk about runners because you need to know what a runner is. Okay, runners are situations where stocks, the stocks seem to have a tendency to jump in a certain direction, either, you know, up if the announcement was positive or down if the announcement was negative, and then keep running for the rest of the day. And you can see it in their charts. If you just uh, bring up a chart, we'll bring up this one uh, on Flowtech, and you can see that it opened a jump higher the last time they had an earnings announce announcement, and then just pushed on higher the rest of the day. And again here, and again here, okay? And then we can look at another example, Daptech. You see how this had a gap opening and then it just pushed on farther? Well, that's the thing that these stocks have a tendency to do. Okay, so uh, we like playing runners around here. It, it is perhaps our one of our favorites. Um, and it does produce nice profits. Not every time, of course, but um, many times, if you're gonna get a profit on one of these, it's, it's oftentimes a big one. You can uh, like more than double your money because on the opening to the jump uh, to the upside, okay, that's when you buy some calls and just ride them for the rest of the day and perhaps for the second day also. You can sometimes uh, do better by holding for the second day. It looks like it's uh, pretty true of this stock or you would uh, hold it longer than just one day. Okay, now... Here's what we've uh, come up with. I don't know how I thought of this, but it just popped into my head one day. A pairs runner. It's a hybrid. So with an earnings pair, instead of buying a straddle before the announcement, you do nothing before the announcement. And instead, you just watch to see how the primary stock responds to its announcement. And if it has some kind of a significant jump, Okay, and I don't know what to tell you is significant. Um, for a stock like Caterpillar, for example, 1% might be significant, 1.5%, I'd say. Uh, but if it was a stock like Google, then, you know, if that jumps 4%, I'm not sure that's significant. <laughs> See what I mean? But the, I, I brought up these examples from the last earnings period for us to look at, and these were back in January, where Caterpillar made its announcement and it was a disappointment. As you can see here from the chart, it dropped, I think, more than two points. And this was on our chart, it was on our calendar for a, doing a, a, a pairs play, an earnings pairs play, okay? And the, the pairing stock was Cummins Engine. Cummins Engine also dropped that day, but not much. But I bought puts and I kept them for an extra day and did very well with them because the next day the stock pushed lower by more than a couple points. And uh, I'm always doing the nearbys when I do this, by the way, because I want high leverage. 
and uh, keep an eye on them. You know, I won't let a loss turn into any significant loss. I, I will cut it before it does that. But when it runs my way, I want to make something good out of it. So I like to use the nearbys. So Cummins engine was a good success. I think that I doubled my money or so, something like that on this. And again, it's just from buying into the move that happens after the announcement, okay, not before the announcement. And I think one thing that helps is when this, it's a BMO type of announcement, okay? I'm sure that helped this because with a before market open type of announcement, um, it seems like it takes a while for the analyst to digest the news that has come out. I don't know when the news comes out, but 7.30, something an hour before the open, I don't know. But it may take them more than an hour to go over the information and digest it and figure out what this company's, you know, what it's worth now, try to revalue it and tell whether they want to go long or short the stock in this point. So, so BMO type announcements, uh, We've seen where it takes them maybe all morning for the stock to get moving and to get some momentum into the afternoon. And that's good for this kind of play. Okay, so we like to see BMOs. Okay, another example from back in the summer was the Google Baidu pair. And this one didn't come up on our chart because Google and Baidu are not listed as um, as earnings pairs. The reason for that is in the past, they've only had one successful um, instance of, of Baidu following Google very well. And if there's only one successful instance, then we will not bring it up. It needs to be at least two, at least two out of the eight instances have to be profitable. So, but but I just knew it in my mind. I just remembered that these two stocks are in the same class together. They're in the same industry. And so it occurred to me that with Google's huge move that it made last time, last summer, a big up move, that I should have a look at Baidu also. And so that day I looked at Baidu and sure enough, it, it had opened a gap to the upside. Not huge, just a little one. But I went ahead and bought calls right away, and I did real well on these. And I, I remember these being more than a double, okay? And uh, so that was an, a successful play that we had in this an area of, of earnings pairs. I mean, pair runners, that's what I meant to say. It's kind of a new way of approaching uh, the pairs. And just wait till the, the day of the announcement, see if the primary stock makes a decent jump. See if the secondary stock also is trying to move the same direction, and then go ahead and buy calls or puts, either whichever is appropriate for the move, and um, play it for the day or play it for two days. Did this one work for two days? Looks like it did. The second day, Baidu was even higher, and the third day, even four. This was even a five-day play. <laughs> Interesting. So that one kept going for five days after Google's announcement. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so that's the new concept I wanted to bring out, and uh, maybe you could try, you know, using that. And uh, that's just about all I wanted to show you this time. I, I can't think of anything else unless uh, any questions come up. I could open it up for questions right now. Oh, sure. Uh, Bob asks, uh, can you bring up earning notes or is it a pay f for product? I believe that's part of the earnings module, isn't it? Yes. Um, those earning notes come from the module. That's right. So it's a paid extra module. And uh, let me put that screen up again. Let's go into slideshow. Oops. Yeah, here's the screen giving you some information about the earnings module. And you can just call in and talk to your rep here about it. Uh, and Any other there, questions? There, there's things that are already built in if you don't have the earnings module, like the earnings dates, for instance. 
Um, can you maybe go over what's in option view that you don't have to buy the earnings announcements module that you already have versus what you would get with the earnings module? Yeah, that's a good question. The earnings date column in the quotes display that I'm highlighting with my cursor right now uh, is there. And uh, other things that are there would be the very important and rather new Johnson model. Let's bring up something that's got an announcement soon. Uh, Chipotle. Chipotle's announcement is after the close tomorrow. And if you go into model volatility, there's this horizontal skew model that's relatively new in the program. It's based on the Johnson model. Uh, again, this is part of option view, and you don't have to pay any extra for this. And you can see that the program is automatically modeling the vol crush that will take place on Wednesday. And it's showing how flat the IVs will become. And then uh, the farther out months, farther out expirations will have a bit higher IV, which is perfectly normal according to the model. So you see with the nearby expiration being the W4, the weekly fours, uh, they're going to lose, according to the model, 57% of, of uh, IV points and come all the way down to 21%. So that's what they're modeled to do and, um, and then so on. So this is in there. Uh, what else relative to earnings? Um, I'm not thinking of anything else that's, that's in there relative to earnings. Oh, maybe just the earnings dates on the uh, price charts. Uh, yes. Oh, good point. Yes. Those are there, and you don't have to have the extra module. Yes, those are built in. That's right. Any other questions? Um, not about the earnings stuff. We did have some in the forums. I know there was that discussion about... Uh, um, using the reconcile column and then making it easier in the matrix to see different combinations and maybe use trade numbers or something. Uh, it, and then we heard that it might be possible that to add that into option, but you were thinking about it. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that or time frames or any, any nuggets of information? Well, I wouldn't mind showing people how I do it. Let's say uh, I'm playing the Coca-Cola announcement. I'm not going to, but let's just say that I, I wanted to contemplate it. And let's say that um, I think the stock will not move much, so I may want to put on a calendar. Here's a calendar in the calls. And if I go ahead and put that into my account, let's make it the temp account. No, I got stuff in there about Coke already. Let's go to sample. Then, um, oh, I used the wrong field. I need to use the trade field. This is not laid out the way I usually do. It kind of threw me off for a moment. Okay, so this is staged up, and I will convert it. And now in the log, I will call this position A. All right, and then um, something different. Well... What the heck, we'll just make it a calendar spread in the puts. And uh, just for for laughs, we'll make it a different quantity. And um, I'll convert that. Oh, I did it again, sorry. And then I can call that position B. And having done that, there's a new dropdown that, that shows up in the matrix where you can display all of your positions or just position A or just position B. And of course you can go on with C, D, E, F, and so on um, and have a great many positions in here that are designated with that single character. By the way, here's something new. You see how the at the money strike is not being represented in the calls right now? You can just click on a spot where you want it to be, and that will make that, it'll instantly shift things so that, that
that it makes that the at the money. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Let's say you wanted to shift this one, you shift it like that, shift it. Just every time I click there, it makes that the at the money. That's relatively new. So then we can go back to showing all your positions. And this is how I do it. Yeah, I think the use case is if you have, say, an exhibition trying to, dis to, to figure out uh, which adjustments to use and look at the different components of a trade. Um, it's, you, know, you can't, for instance, select, um, say you have three different, like A, B, C, I want to look at a combination of A and C and then a combination of A and B and compare them, you know, something like that. That type oh, yes. Now, now that you mention it, yes, we have had that request. And it is on my list. I'd like to do that sometime soon. Can't say exactly when. But, uh, you know, another thing is uh, you can quickly separate the calls and the puts. If I click on this right here, then uh, the calls changes color. And in the bottom of the matrix, uh, all these figures are about the calls only. Now, if you click this again, it'll go to puts, and all these figures are about the puts only. And then click it once more, and, and it contains all the options again. That's one thing. And then the feature that's been there a long time is you can click on one of these expiration headers, and it changes color. And now the figures in the bottom are about this column only, this, this expiration only. So that's a couple. That's a couple more ways of um, distinguishing or, you know, segregating segregating your position. And I believe you can also combine like two uh, columns, for instance. I think with the was it the control key? If you hold two, you can click on two different columns. Oh yes, that's right. I will hold control right now and click this one also, and now I'm including both columns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just use the usual control key thing to multi-select like that. Then if you do anything without the control key held down, then that's going to be only that one. So, Right. Um, Jerry asks, uh, there seems to be a problem where the keyboard is lagging and at times seems frozen. He's called tech support several times. He's got a strong processor connected to Thinkorswim. Do you have any ideas to, to fix this? I assume that he's getting his quotes through Thinkorswim because, um, yes, this is a known problem, and there really isn't anything that we can do about it. It's using the rather ancient DDE approach to interfacing, and it's... It's slow and old-fashioned. It's cumbersome. Um, the way that it interacts with the keyboard is a complete mystery to me. You know, I've, I've explored that, tried to solve it. I've spent hours on it. And I've delved down as deep as I can possibly go without getting into the code from Microsoft, which I don't have access to anyway. And I have no idea why uh, the keyboard and DDE interact the way they do sometimes. Yeah, I imagine that'd be tough to figure out. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to Thinkorswim coming out with a more modern interface approach, but so far they haven't given us anything that we can use. There's there's something they, they said they work with, some acronym. I don't remember the acronym, but... Um, I can't get anything on that. I can't get any specs on that interface method that they said is, is a little bit newer. And Tim says TOS current interface is a modern RTD. RTD, that's it. But I've searched for specs on RTD and can't seem to find anything about it. If anyone knows something that they can send to me, uh, feel free. I, I would welcome knowing more about RTD. And, but right uh, now, I, I, I just don't know how to even get started with it. Well, Jim, maybe, if, uh, Jim Clements, if you have some information, land, point them in the right direction.
Shakri has a, he has an ES position on futures options, the butterfly, and he analyzed the Greeks on a combined position that contain futures and options. And I know you can. Oh. oh, absolutely. The ES. Here's the ES matrix. And yes, uh, we'll throw in a position here. Let's say we're along for these futures, and we're short. Um, Eight of these calls. You can put any number of positions in here. Okay, and then uh, click analyze, and that'll be the analysis of your total position. Yes, we yeah. handle uh, futures options just as well as we do equity options. I know with the futures options with the stand margin, it's risk based. Is there any chance that the uh, portfolio margin, which is kind of like span margin, will will be implemented? That has come up pretty high on my list now. That I expect to finish before year end. Oh, that's Yeah, and in fact, if I find, I don't I don't have any idea how hard it's going to be, but I don't expect it to be very hard. And who knows, maybe it'll only take me a couple of days to put it in. So, yes, that's high on my list, very high. Uh, let's see, we had uh, some people trade, uh, say, Russell, and they'll, they'll hedge with uh, IWM or SPX, and they'll hedge with SPY. Is that uh, something you've considered adding, like where you can add in, like, a secondary uh, underlying? Yes, I've had that request a few times, and that's on my list, but down a little ways. Um, sure. I see that as being possibly difficult and Maybe it won't be once I get into it, but um, I would like to do it at some point. I just don't know just when. There's some other low-hanging fruit that comes first, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so any other questions? So I was just going to ask, is there any more questions before we let you go? Uh, now, Jan's asked, uh, only a small issue, sometimes I miss to expire options in a test account. I get this Windows only at the start, but after the next move, it disappears. How can I get it again in the current session? Well, I'm not sure I grasp all that. Why don't we, um, I would encourage you to write that in to us or call us. Um, and uh, if, you were, if you write in, just go ahead and write to support at optionview.com. And uh, once we get the details of that, I'll be glad to have a look at it. It would probably help, Jans, if you uh, do a screen capture and paste it in your email to support. Mm -hmm. Pictures a lot. So uh, anything else that you're working on that might be uh, imminently released in the next version? The thing I'm working on right now, I don't know how important this is to all of our users, but maybe it's important to some, is we're separating ETFs from stocks so that when you do a survey or you do an op scan, you can say, I only want to survey for ETFs or I only want to survey for stocks. And that way, um, you know, you're getting those two rather big class classes that you can um, choose between. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. I know an ETF acts just like a stock, and so all these years we've had it in there just like a stock, and we call it a stock. But um, in our next release, we want to be able to let you separate those and and uh, just scan or survey on one or the other, if you like, or both. You can still you will still be able to do both at once. Very good. Um, and do you still uh, support eSignal? Just I was thinking about it. I used it years ago, and then I thought you stopped supporting it, but I, I, I seem to remember it's back in. Where, where yes, sir. yes, it's back in. It was out for a while, but it's back in now and working well. Okay, great. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you know, some people have asked about the granularity of the back testing data, and I think I asked. Uh, Jim Graham last time, but it appears there's no real plans to go anything more granular than 30 minutes at this point. 
that's not uppermost in my mind. Um, and personally, I haven't heard very many requests for uh, more granular, um, for it to be more granular. But, uh, you know, I'll ask Jim whether he's heard very many, and we'll see. But to my knowledge, it it hasn't come up that much lately. Okay. What, what's your opinion on that, Tom? Do you think this isn't that's important to people? Well, we've had some comments in the forums of people asking about it, and they seem to have the perception that they'd like it. But um, to me, 30-minute data is probably enough for testing. But uh, there are there's a, a number of people that, that do like it, so mm -hmm. it's 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 okay for me. But other people want it, so I don't know. Um, we can put a survey up and see what kind of interest there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wouldn't know what granular to go to, like 15 minutes, is that sufficient? Anyway. I know Laura's is using five, but um, to me that seems a little overkill, but um, that's what they have, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of sense that would be overkill too. 15 minutes might be just perfect. Yeah. Either that or 10. And Jans is asking about the speed of back testing. So this might be something. I know you can download back testing data. Uh, maybe uh, just a quick demo of how people do that to speed up their back testing. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, let's say you're focused in on a particular asset like the Russell. I'll open the Russell matrix, although I don't think I, I need to open it. And then in... Under the net view uh, in the main main menu, you, you click on collect back trader data. And with the Russell matrix open, I believe I can just click. Oh, it's already, okay, it's already there because the Russell matrix was open. And then you just enter two dates, um, the old date and the most recent date that you're interested in, and then select the granularity um, whether it's just end of day only or at the half hour intervals. And what do you want to do in terms of merging with data you might already have? And then you just click go. Here, let's put dates in. Uh, I'll put T-365 T be a year ago. And then I'll just put today. By the way, how did I do that so fast? I, I typed T. T is for today. So in any date field, if you type T, it's today. Um, and then you click go, and then this will sit here, and it may take several minutes. Okay, at half hour intervals, this is going to take hours. It's going to take uh, almost eight hours, it shows. So you'd want to set this running when you're finished using option view at the end of the day or, you know, in the evening when you're not going to be looking at option view and just let it run all through the night. And after it's collected all these, uh, you know, snapshots of data at these half-hour intervals for a whole year, then you can go looking through um, your Russell matrix, and you can step forward in BackTrader, and it very quickly fills in the data for you. So that makes it nicer for you to do your what-ifing. When, uh, when you're going through BackTrader, say, you know, one day at a time, you're just manually stepping through it, is option view saving all that data that's pulling in from NetView, or does it just, um, you know, say you go forward and back and forward and back, does it uh, have to keep refreshing every time and pulling in new data? No, it doesn't. It, it is saving it on your hard drive, and so when you revisit the same date and you have the same matrix open, then it doesn't have to, con you know, uh, communicate with the server about that data. It just uh, gets it quickly from the local drive. And that's true of the quotes display as well. Let's say you're going back to the same date you were on before, but you have a different matrix open. Well, at least it can get the data quickly for the quotes display uh, from your local drive. And then it has to go to the server for the data to fill in the matrix. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and yes, it is, it is saving. Mm -hmm. Didn't mention uh, Graham, if you use an immediate rather than delayed updates, it makes the response time better. 
So maybe if you cancel that out and then just show that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's uh, just let's go into back trader and um, we'll just go ahead and start on Friday at the end of the day. And this uh, immediate updates, if you if you choose this, then every click you make, it's going to go immediately and get the, the data for that. So see, it goes pretty quickly when you've got it on immediate. But if you intend to skip over some days or skip over some times, then immediate's going to get in your way. So let's say I want to go to noon. If I want to go to noon, then I'm going to go on delayed. And now I'll click this four times, and it will not bother getting anything until I've stopped for at least about a second, I guess. Understand? So this way I can click these buttons, multiply, blah, 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 like this, click all over the place, and it's not, it, it, it thinks I'm not finished yet until I haven't clicked anything for about a second, and then it says, okay, I'll go get the data. See how that works? Yep. Great. And uh, let's see. So Stephen and Jan say uh, after they download the data, then he still has to wait for downloading for some reason. Is there something mm. else to download or NetView communicate? Well, usually there are two windows open, the quotes display and the matrix, and it will get first the quotes display and then the matrix. But um, does it really say twice? Let me bring open a matrix and have a look. Like it might be a good idea if you're doing back testing after you've downloaded the data to close the quotes window and only have the matrix open. Does that make sense? Yes, that could make sense. That might speed things up, sure. Now, where's my matrix? I thought I had one open. Okay, okay so here we go. Oh, I think it got data locally. No? Okay, it said up updating the quotes display, and now it's saying updating spy. And now it says it's complete. So it does show you that it's updating the quotes display and then the matrix, and then it says complete. Yep. I don't know if that's what the fellow is talking about. Yeah, I suspect that the quotes display is open, so even if they've downloaded the data, say, for Russell, it still has to go grab the quotes for the quotes display. Mm-hmm. Right. That can happen. Oh, yes. You're referring to having all that data stored for, uh... well, you know, the way I was doing it a few minutes ago, I had the quotes display open at the same time, and as a result, it was storing locally both the quotes display snapshots and the matrix snapshots. So those will be, both be available to you the next morning or day when you start to uh, do your research. Right. And those should both update fast. Um, Shakri had a question. Is there a way to compare spread prices across multiple expiry dates? Compare spread prices across multiple expiries. Um, okay. Them, but you can't attach one in a WebEx chat. Um, Trade Finder is our tool for looking at, you know, all the various kinds of strategies that are available. I don't know if we want to get into this. This could be a half hour by itself. But. Um, sure. Yes, you can set this up and turn it loose, and it'll compare and and uh, recommend the best spreads to do in a certain in under the right circumstances. You need to tell it how much you're investing and what you think that the stock is going to do, whether that be neutral or bullish or bearish. You need to express your target here. I don't want to get started if we not. 
if we don't have another 30 or 40 minutes, because that's about how long this would take. <laughs> Bang on like up, and that could be a whole hour just by itself. Yeah, could be. And again, in YouTube or on our website, there are short videos showing features like this and all the other features that are in option view. Right. Okay. Choppy wrote back that let's say he's interested in a Russell 1150 butterfly price and how that price changes over a period of time. Is that, uh, I think he's looking at the spread window. I don't know if you can actually bring that up for multiple, or, you know, like a rolling window or something. I'm not sure exactly what he's asking. This might be another one for an email to support. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know if he wanted a graphic analysis or uh, if we want the like spread window. The price of the butterfly, so it sounds like the spread button. Okay. You would click on spread, and then... You would say, okay, for this one, I want to go long. And for this one, I want to go short twice. And for this one, I want to go long. And then click on show spread window. So there's the price of the spread, bid 50 cents, asking 3.7, with a, a midpoint of 2.03. Okay. And I guess there's no way to plot that. Like, uh, I know at Interactive Brokers, for instance, you can plot the price of uh, options or maybe even spread over time. Um, plotted over time. Well, does the graphic analysis meet that need? Yeah, like, well, like a price chart, for instance, of the uh, price of an option over time. And probably the same mm. thing. With Bring it up on a price chart. Yeah, like an individual option versus like the underlying. Maybe this is what he's looking for. You know, what does the profit zone look like going into the future? And uh, interestingly, it, interestingly, it narrows. Yeah. Uh, he said he's going to send screenshots to support, so I guess we'll deal with that one that way. All right. Okay. Okay, well... Perhaps that's it for today. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk. And I appreciate your listening, you listeners out there. Thank you. Oh, we have one last question before you go. Uh, Jim Hamby has a, the super account reports. He'd like it to include a column for the account name. I recently did that, I believe, in reports. Super account. And if it's a super account, I'll check that after we get through here. But I did add account if we go into formatting here. Account. Um, yeah, okay. I, I suppose it would have to be a super, it needs to be a super account for that to, to work. Okay, I'll jot right. that down. I'll make note of that, and I'll have a look at it later. Good enough. Well, thank you very much, Len. Really appreciate it. And Jim Graham in the background helping out with the questions. So uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. And uh, I'll get this recording posted as soon as we can. And uh, thanks again, Len. Really appreciate you taking time to, uh, to go over some features of Option View with us. Sure. Glad to do it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day and a good week. All right, bye.